Welcome back in. We are bringing in our good friend uh, from uh, ESPN 1530, 700 WLW, uh, Mo Egger, uh, joining us here this morning. Mo, um, <laughs> I guess this needs no introduction. Jeremy caught this, uh, you know, after, you know, Burrow was out yesterday. That's a pretty swollen hand right there, buddy. Doesn't look good. It looks like a chicken cutlet. It does. You know, and I like a chicken cutlet. I don't know that that's what you want your hand to be compared to. Not good. Well, let's leading up to this. Uh -huh. Okay, it, it looked pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it, it, they, when the injury happened, you're up 10 7. Yeah, they were winning. And yeah. this looked non contact, the injury aspect of it. What what was your thought process going through watching this last night? That what everybody was making a big deal about on Twitter, mm -hmm. which, you know, you, you always take that with a grain of salt. But right. what everybody was making a big deal about on Twitter was an issue. He, and that's the, the when he got off the plane. Yeah, he had that. It looked like a, a wristband or a wrap. Right. And so I think you are being fair if you have arrived at the conclusion that he was dealing with soreness. He was dealing with some sort of injury and and aggravated it, made it worse. What was interesting to me was when the game ended and he's out there doing the weird lefty handshake, yeah. it wasn't like it was in a wrap. No. It wasn't in a bandage. It we wasn't talked about that a little bit. In a cast. So exactly what it is, Zach Taylor talked after the game about it, uh, it looking like it was a sprain, but it was interesting to me the lack of anything on it after the game. But yeah, relative to what a lot of people speculated before the game, when you saw Joe not only come out of the game, but the, the shot of him on the sideline, not being able to, to grip the ball and throw it and just sort of dropping it and looking at the medical people shaking his head, I, I think most of us have arrived at the conclusion that he was dealing with something before the game even started. We uh, asked questions of Coach Taylor about this. Uh, there, of course, is the uh, the video there uh, uh, of Lamar Jackson uh, going. I mean, the uh, Ravens drove down the field. Yeah. You know what we've seen the Bengals do the last couple games. And then Bengals right back in it. I want to go to the sound uh, from Coach Taylor addressing if, you know, he knew if anything was going on. I thought there were some positive things from Jake. That, that's a tough, tough defense to face in your first uh, NFL action. Um, I was proud of the way that he went in there and led those guys and competed. And, and again, I, I can only imagine the situation he finds himself in, you know, when you're down and it's um, a situation like he's in. But I thought he competed and, and uh, did some good things for us. And of course, he's talking about uh, Jake uh, Browning, who yeah. came in, who was, you know, Moments earlier, just on the, he's probably doing some <laughs> Amazon Christmas shopping on his uh, Microsoft uh, tablet there. And then he goes, yeah. what? I got to get in there. We'll talk about Browning in a second, but I do mm -hmm. want to talk about that aspect uh, of, because Coach Shayla said he knew nothing, that there was anything going on with uh, Burrow's hand. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to call anybody a liar. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, you see him coming off the jet with that thing on. The NFL, according to uh, Adam Schefter, is investigating yeah. now uh, that they, did the Bengals not put, that into the injury report? You have to disclose injuries. Joe Burrow looked like he was dealing with an injury. Look yeah. at that footage right there. This this wasn't a contact. He didn't bang it on a helmet. He Correct. didn't land on it awkwardly. It just happened. And again, you know, everybody saw the image on Wednesday of Joe having something on his wrist. I don't know what it was, but you see that, and then you see what happened last night. You got to connect the dots, and then when you do that, you go, okay, understanding there's a league rule that you have to disclose every injury, why didn't the Bengals do that? Did that have anything to do with the outcome of the game, not disclosing the injury? No, no. but especially in the gambling world, you've got to disclose yes. everything, and it looks like there's a possibility at least that the Bengals didn't. And we're watching that second half. That just was not pretty. I mean, Jake Browning did, did what he could, uh, but yeah, I mean, not a lot of reps this season, obviously. And going back to the disclosure thing, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a serious, you can get serious fine. The teams have also uh, lost draft picks. NFL takes that very seriously. Competitively, and you know, and again, the injury report is amplified the importance of it in the age we're in, where gambling is much more mainstream and yeah. legal, you know, uh, in so many places. So that's a big deal. I, I do think all of this overshadows what was we just saw right there. The Baltimore Ravens had over 100 yards after the catch last night. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati's defense, which we talk a lot about bending but not breaking, it's starting to bend too much. Injuries. Uh, uh, you know, Sam Hubbard obviously not in there. Sam Hubbard not being Hendrickson's in there is a problem. Not 100%. The one that I worry about is Cam Taylor Britt. 
Yes. Cam Taylor Britt's terrific. He's been such a big part of this defense. He left last night with a quad injury, so you have that issue. I think the other thing is folks are going to talk about Jake Browning. He played like a guy getting his first NFL action. He was behind an offensive line that performed poorly last night. So the burrow issue, the burrow hand thing is the biggest issue mm -hmm. we have to sort through. But this team competitively over the last couple of weeks, some cracks in the foundation have started to show. And we've seen with other teams, uh, we're going to talk with Betsy Ross about this a little bit. I mean, there's so many teams on their backup quarterbacks, but some of those, you know, Cleveland for one now. Yeah. Um, but the defenses of those yeah. teams can kind of hopefully carry them through a bit. You can lean on that, and that's going to be a real concern for us. Okay, let's look at the picture here. Uh, if, you know, you and I talked back in July, would we have thought that the <laughs> Buffalo Bills and the Bengals would have been 5-5? Five and five? I don't think so. No, look, you look at the division math, it's hard. You know, I mentioned gambling. Cincinnati is now plus 1,700 to win mm. the division. Uh, going into last night, they were plus 400. You look at the, the division, so the three games back in the win column, and they've lost both games to the Ravens, so you're essentially four back with seven to go. I think the troubling thing is, though, as you start to think about tiebreakers in the AFC, Bengals have just one win in the conference. In the AFC. And their schedule still includes two with Pittsburgh, not going to be easy. At Cleveland, still not going to be team. easy. Jacksonville in prime time on the road, not going to be easy. Kansas City, not going to be easy. Oh, and by the way, the team that right now has the longest winning streak in the sport, Minnesota, the Vikings, they come here in a couple of weeks. And so it's not just, it's not just the injury. And they're injury. on a backup. Sure. Josh it's not just the injury. It's not just how they're playing. It's you start to do the playoff math, and then you start to look at the schedule, and then you start to factor in injuries. It's a dark morning here yeah. in Cincinnati, Frank. I don't think eight no. wins. I mean, there might, there's a path there, but everything needs to fall. Well, I mean, eight, eight wins. Eight, eight can, wins. Can get him in eight, with, the, with these quarterbacks. Eight wins won't get him in. No. Nine, you go, okay, it's probably going to come down to a tiebreaker. Well, you win a head to head tiebreaker mm -hmm. with Buffalo, you lose a head to head tiebreaker with Houston, and then you factor in winning only one conference game so far. I think it's going to take 10. So that means they have to go five and two the rest of the way, and we don't know what the status of the starting quarterback is right now. If he's out, do you, bring, you try to bring somebody in, somebody out there? Uh, I don't know that that's going to work. Yeah. You know, it sounds great. I know a lot of people are going to talk about Matt Ryan and, you know, Tom Where, Brady. Where's Joe Flacco? Where's <laughs> Joe Flacco? I, I think you, you've Tom heard Brady. for a while now they like Jake Browning. He's yeah. been a part of their system for over two years now. I think what they'll say is if we have to prepare him to be the starter, we think we can make the offense function better with that than with somebody we bring in off the street. Yeah. No matter. Uh, be a pretty boring radio show today. I'm flying to West Virginia. Oh, you're UC game. So, you so yeah. yeah. You Monday though. Monday. Monday. Broadcasting from Twin Peaks in Florence. Oh, very nice. On Monday, we'll get ready for Pittsburgh. We'll get ready for Pittsburgh. What does Belichick yeah. say back there? It's on to Kansas City. I'm it's just, you know, uh, uh, the social media last night. There were a lot of like a sudden like hand experts. Yes, right? and and uh, lip readers. Lip readers and hand experts. Yes. Those, those experts, they've, they've solved the, the Midwest conflict or the, mm -hmm. the Middle East conflict. They're, yes. They've experts on that. Now they're experts on hands. On hands. Yep, yeah. yep. I'm going to, yeah.